What is up everybody and welcome back to the final Dash tutorial video in this series. We're just going to be working on some interactivity with uh, some plotly charts uh, basically throughout this tutorial and we're just going to apply it onto our chart that we made in our web app. So if I go to my web app right here, um, I had Yahoo Finance right here but I'm going to show what I need to show with that in a little bit. Um, here is where we last left off. So the only thing I changed pretty much was just the height of the news table. Um, and I'll show you how I did that in a sec. It was super easy. But uh, as you can see right here, we just have a chart, but we really can't interact with it that much. We see that we have an annotation right here. We go up and down it. But what if we want to change the tar chart type? Um, what if we wanted to change you know, the date range easily? Like something like this, right? So you can see in uh, Yahoo Finance, you can change between uh, different time frequencies and stuff like that. And let's say we want to add a button here to change between a candlestick chart or a line chart. We can do that in Plotly. It's super easy um, comparative to what people had to do before to do something like this. But overall, that's going to be the essence of this tutorial. That's all we're going to really do. And then we're going to call it after that. So first things first, the only other change I made was with the table height. And you can come down here to generate HTML table. And it, if you see height right here, you can just change it to um, whatever you want, really. Uh, so I just use 300 points instead of 150 like before. Anyhow, uh, we're going to start by creating a range slider, which will allow us to select different time frequencies for our chart. So right above layout, it's going to go in layout, but I'm just going to find it easier to copy and paste it within there. So I'll say x-axis, and that's equal to a dictionary. And what I'll do is range selector equals dict and then um, I'm pretty much just going to go on Plotly's website and copy and paste what they have for a range selector because I think it would be pointless to just you know go through and create what is fairly standard for each chart um, that would be included so like a one month six month year to date type of time frame so it pretty much just starts as this so if you were to do a custom one yourself it, this is where you'd really put it in right here but I'm gonna go on their website um, and go right to it and make sure that I have the right code copied so I'm writing the website guys and you can see right here that we have our range selector that we're going to need um, and this again is fairly standard and there's no reason for me to take like five ten minutes and code it in so uh, yeah this is what we're after and you can see they call it a range slider because you can slide this back and forth so I'm gonna go up here and just go ahead and copy and paste the from the x-axis all the way down to date I'm just making sure I have everything there um, and I'm gonna go back in PyCharm and we don't need this anymore because we just copied it so I'm going to delete that and then copy that once more. And I think I missed one. There we go. And this is going right into layout. So under auto size, it should go right there. And let's check it out and see if it worked. So we have range slider uh, is visible and we're returning our layout to. So just to go over it really quickly, all we're really doing right here is modifying uh, the x-axis property and we're cha you can change it from different frequencies. Uh, you can check the documentation on Plotly if you want to change it to something else, but this is fairly standard in what we're going to use. So let's go ahead and save this and open it back up and let's see if it worked. And there we go. Boom. Right there. So we saved a little time not having to code that by hand. Again, the Plotly website is like a wealth of information. You can go and find some incredible content on there to incorporate it in your own web applications. So I would highly recommend you guys to check it out. Um, anyhow, the last portion we're going to add in, uh, we are going to code by hand, however. So this is more or less going to be like an update menu, which is another thing that's pretty standard in Plotly. Um, so instead of having a range slider, which is right here as we did before. So we can adjust this. Boom, there we go. Um, we're going to have a button that's going to be a drop down and change between chart types. So let's go over here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and add a few more traces. I'm going to stop running our app. 
So again, our traces are basically going to be our data for this. So I'm going to call it trace OHLC, or I'll say candle. And then I'll do a bar chart as well. Cool. And I'll add it all in here. And you're going to see why this is important in a second. So we have our layout there. Um, what we want to do now is say update menus. And that's going to be equal to a list. Um, so the next thing we want to include is all the buttons that we're going to have in a dictionary. So we'll say buttons. That's going to be equal to the list. Okay. Uh, so for the first thing that we're going to need is the button that's going to have our first chart type that we're going to have activated. Um, so what I mean by that is that when we come here, we want, let's say, a line chart to be displayed first instead of a candlestick chart. So the order of what we're doing will matter in terms of uh, which one we're displaying first. Um, and while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and change these uh, chart types. So uh, instead of a line graph like we have right here, we're going to make these into uh, go dot candlestick. And the only thing that's going to be different is for a candlestick chart, we need uh, a different order. So we need the open high low and then close. And so that's going to be equal to df.close. And I don't think I need to keep this in a list. It doesn't really matter because um, it's just part of a data frame anyways. So I'll get rid of that. And, and I'll line this up. Awesome. So I'll copy and paste this. And that has to be df.open. And you get the picture from here. Um, and we want to set visible equal to false at first because uh, what's going to happen is if we set it equal to true, this is going to display right when we open the web app. We want this one to be displayed first. So both of these are going to be set to visible equals false. And we're going to modify the visibility through the update menus right here, which is in turn going to modify this data uh, list right here. If It will make a lot more sense once we finish the programming for it. Um, anyhow, what we want to do is go to here right now, and then we'll say go.ohlc. And I'll probably just copy and paste this because it'll be a little bit easier to do because we already have all the information there. It's a very similar chart type. So bar ohlc. Um, and I believe we have everything there, to be honest. I don't think we need anything else. So it's just another chart. Um, so after that, we can just create our buttons. So we can code our first button now. So that's going to be uh, the line chart within the drop down. So this is all going to be a drop down list. So we'll include it in a dictionary. And args is going to be equal to the visibility of the trace, which is right here. If I can get out of here. Uh, so we want to make this when we click on it visible and these other two not visible, right? So what we're going to do is use the visible property. And we want to set that to not false, true, false, false. Cool. I might just put a label to it for the drop down line. Um, and then method equals update and that should be just about it for this button and we can just copy and paste it now separated by a comma and we'll just do the exact same thing for the candle and the bar chart and instead of true right here we're gonna do false true false true and uh, furthermore, we're just going to 
come right down here and finish putting these all in a drop down. So direction is going to be equal to down. And we'll add some padding to it as well. So give that 10 and then give that 10. Okay. And we'll set the position of it within our web app or chart rather. And we'll anchor it. And again, this section right here is just to create the drop down itself. And, and just to fix it right here, we'll finish with that. And boom, there's our update menus. And we can assign them right here. Update menus equals update menus. Cool. So that should be about it for our update menus. And let's just go over the flow of how everything's going right here with our update menus. We have traces right here, because I know it can get a little confusing. We have traces right here that are going to be displayed dynamically, right? So this is a line trace, candle trace, and bar trace. The first one that's going to be displayed is this because the, the visible element is true at this state. So uh, these two, however, are false. But we can modify the visibility with an update menu, right? So when we do update, we're assigning a Boolean with a visibility um, in terms of the visibility of the trace to these, right? So uh, right here, when we select the line, uh, only the line trace is displayed and the other two traces are not displayed. And the same is true for everything over at the bottom in terms of our buttons right over there. So uh, let's try and run this and see if it all ended running smoothly. So we'll just wait for a second to let this load. Perfect. And it looks like we have everything there. So let's go ahead and experiment. I'm gonna choose a candlestick. And boom, there's a candlestick. We can tell um, by the annotations as well. And let's choose a bar. And there's not much of a change there, but that's all right. So you guys get the gist with what we can do with Plotly charts within our web app. We can make it pretty interactive. And that's the goal of all of this at the end of the day, to have an easy to use, simple web app that will allow users to interact very well. So uh, that does it for this tutorial in this web app. I'm going to publish this on GitHub and uh, you guys will be able to access the code there. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this series and don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.